Let's talk about markets. David Barnson is founder and CEO at the Barnson Group, joining us from Newport Beach, California. David Bonson, sorry about that. But just in terms of your expectations on the markets, we've got the bond market saying one thing and this dislocation with equity market valuations telling us another thing. So in your, in your view, which one's getting it right right now? Should we expect more equity weakness or are the bond markets going to have a little bit of repricing perhaps when we get the bond auctions later this week? Well, I'm not sure that the bond and stock markets have been saying something that different for most of the year. You've seen yields come up in the last two trading days, but almost all year, uh, bond yields have been pricing in uh, some expectation of a, a easier Fed and a, a different economic environment than we have seen. And I think that equities had largely been pricing around that with a little bit more re-rating in some of the less um, quality parts of the market, including in technology, communication services, and so forth. But right now, what I really think you're seeing in both stock and bond markets is the future pricing. You see the long end of the curve having dropped about 40 basis points this year. Um, We don't believe there's going to be great growth, but the soft landing thesis in recession has gotten uh, much more uh, play that there is a lower likelihood of a severe recession, and so I think the bond market has had to price somewhere in between those two extremes. And David, Mr. Powell is speaking again this week, and this is his opportunity if he feels that the market uh, misread his comments last week to either correct or clarify. Do you think he's just going to run with this ball, or do you think he might push back a little bit on the way the market is reacting? I thought last week Chairman Powell was incredibly clear. They are always aware of how markets are responding to what they're saying, and they use messaging and forward guidance as a policy tool itself. And I think that last week Chairman Powell was well aware that markets were pricing in the belief that they maybe had another quarter point to go and were going to be pausing from there. I don't think he needs to speak to what the terminal rate duration will be. How long will they stay level? When will cuts begin? It would undermine credibility. And I genuinely don't think he knows. But I do believe he knows that they don't intend to do much further tightening. And I think he's okay with continuing to say inflation is our big theme, all the while recognizing that financial conditions have loosened a great deal. I think you make an excellent point where he doesn't know, so therefore the market shouldn't know either. So whether you're a bull or a bear, is it irrelevant at this juncture? And we can just reasonably say, look, the market's had a great run. Maybe it's just time for a breather and to expect a little bit of choppiness in the near term. Yeah, anybody who's not expecting choppiness in the near term is crazy. It's it's entirely likely that you will see markets continue to gyrate up and down and having a month where the nasdaq moves up 10 percent does not change the fact that it's very susceptible to months of coming back down 10 percent but the reality is valuation the s p is now trading back again at about 17 and a half 18 times earnings and that's assuming you don't get any weakness or deterioration in earnings expectations for the year I I do not believe that markets have priced in in earnings the expectation of a real recession. We're still looking at about $225 on the year for earnings. That's 2% more than you had last year. So I believe that the better play for investors is not to be a bull or a bear or to be in an index, but it's to be very selective. Allow for the bullishness that allows you to pick good quality companies leaning into value, leaning into cash flow, leaning into strong balance sheets, but not trying to make a market call on the entire index at these valuations. David, before we get to some of your stock picks, I wanted to ask you about Microsoft and Google in terms of this whole AI run, because we've seen a lot of action even in the AI stocks today. Do you think, though, specifically for Microsoft and Google, this could be the next big growth driver for them? This could be the next big thing that could rapidly shift the landscape when it does come to the tech space as well? Well, it's always possible that there's a new shiny object that will help drive another level of growth. Uh, Microsoft, after being about a decade behind, found that in cloud and had an unbelievable run. The notion of AI being 
a growth driver. It wouldn't be much of a surprise. People have been talking about how to monetize AI and, and sort of go uh, vertical with the applications of artificial intelligence for some time. Um, but the question would still be what is already priced in. When companies are already trading north of 30 times earnings, they're not doing that from their software business. They're not doing it from their search business. They're doing it because there is an expectation that they have some uh, unknown growth catalyst in the future. And so that would be the hard part for investors is that these companies have to execute well with new technologies and investors have to get a feel for what is already priced in. David, we've only got a short amount of time. Give us your stock picks in as short and as succinct time as you possibly can. Well, we really like the energy space and think that the midstream energy, we use a ticker UMI, provides great pipelines, oil and gas transportation with a high yield, and you don't have to guess what oil prices are going to do. So UMI would be a great idea right now for investors. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, David Banton from the Banton Group.